Hello and welcome back to my 10 favorite people. Hope you're doing well. This video feels like an especially important one because I truly cannot believe that the majority of investors don't think the BlackRock spot ETF launch will be a sell the news event. And every time I talk about my recession concerns or my concerns with the increasing unemployment rate and what that could mean for the S&P 500 and how it tends to perform terribly in recessions and what that could mean for Bitcoin next year, those arguments get thrown out the window because this time is different because thanks to the spot ETF, institutions will be able to enter for the first time. So there's no way it could be a sell the news event and we don't have to worry about the recession because we're going to get so much inflow from institutions once this goes live. And I understand this sentiment so well because I felt the same way in 2017 and I saw a lot of people make the same mistake in 2021 because what ends up happening is the price increases going into these events push the narratives more and more. So normally what ends up happening is you have smart money accumulating and then you have crypto natives accumulating. And then as you get closer and closer to the event, while price is going up, mainstream media starts to talk about it and retail starts to FOMO in aggressively going into the event because price increasing as we enter it gives more and more confirmation to people that this is going to be some major bullish catalyst and that the rally is just getting started because we haven't even gotten the ETF yet. And this is why, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, I'm bullish going into the, T the ETF because I don't expect any large allocators to sell their Bitcoin before we get the ETF launch because it is such a big and perfect catalyst to generate liquidity and sell into once it goes live. And that's why I think we're seeing such a tight supply situation and we're seeing price grind its way higher because no one is willing to sell their coins pre ETF. And it's really setting us up for what I think will be a very painful Q2 2024 because everybody is going to FOMO in more and more as we go higher entering into the ETF and then all those recession and unemployment rate concerns will actually play out next year as expected, but they will be ignored because the ETF is going to be all over the mainstream media and bringing all these investors back into the space. And for those of you that weren't around in 2017, I'll explain what the sentiment was back then really quickly. Even though we were having a 100x rally from bottom to top on Bitcoin for the December 2017 CME Futures product launch, everybody was expecting 50k because they thought the rally was just getting started because the institutions were about to have access for the first time. So believe it or not, before the CME futures launch, there was not a single regulated futures product to be able to long or short Bitcoin. All you could do was buy spot on exchanges and maybe do some leverage trading on some sketchy offshore exchanges. But the CME futures was the first US based regulated crypto exchange. Well, all they offered was Bitcoin during that launch and everybody saw it as, oh, liquidity is coming. Here comes the volume. Institutions are going to have access for the first time. But what ended up happening is they just ended up shorting Bitcoin on the top and we entered a bear market even as all of retail was piling in expecting that the party and the rally was just getting started because the institutions were about to come and buy our bags from us and send this significantly higher because it was the first time they were going to have access to bitcoin quote unquote which is incredibly similar to what I hear today. Now, of course, I know the number one pushback I'm going to get is, well, that was at the top of a bull market. 2021 was also at the top of a bull market. This is not. So obviously, I don't expect as big of a crash and sell off as those two events. But the narratives and the FOMO leading into the event and the grinding upwards price action leading into the event as everybody gets more and more confident that it'll be a bullish catalyst is the exact same as 2017. This narrative of institutions coming is no different. 
It was also the same for the Coinbase IPO. It was going to be the first publicly traded crypto based company. We were going to have regulatory clarity. Institutions could finally come in because Coinbase was going to have to share their books now that they're publicly traded. But instead, we rally all the way into the event and the event ends up being a sell the news event and we crash 50% afterwards because all the money bought into the narrative leading into the event and there were no big buyers to come in after the fact and send us higher. And we saw the same thing with Bito in November 2021, the first Bitcoin futures ETF. Back then we were just saying first ETF because we didn't have a spot or a futures. Price rallies into it, everyone gets bullish into the launch, everybody's expecting 100k, but because everybody bought leading into the event, there was no money coming in to send us higher after the fact. And that's why it's so shocking to me that we're not learning our lesson, and as price continues to increase, we FOMO more and more. I mean, the YouTubers and influencers on Twitter don't help because all they do is celebrate price going up and make fun of the people that aren't buying, but... Even though this is not in the middle of a bull market and we're entering some major blow off peak, a sell the news event is still incredibly likely and the narratives are no different. In 2017, it was the first institutional product. In 2021, it was the first institutional ETF. And now this time we're saying, oh no, Beto was bearish because it was futures. BlackRock ETF is going to be bullish because it's spot but I don't think that's how it's going to play out. I do think a rally into the event is incredibly likely, but I think next year, the more important macro drivers like the first Fed cut and the upcoming recession are going to take precedence over the fact that we have an ETF and you combine that with all the buying and liquidity entering heading into the event. I think a lot of that big money is going to start distributing around the time of the launch and we're going to have to enter, enter a reaccumulation period next year during the recession. Now, it's very hard to know how price is going to go exactly leading into that event. Are we going to peak at 50? Are we going to peak at 47, 48? Could even be the low 40s. It's impossible to know, but I am not selling any of my exposure before the launch date. And based on what kind of impulse move we get into the launch, I'm going to use that to decide what I want to do. And no matter what narratives I'm hearing, and I'm sure mainstream media is going to be mega bullish, everybody on Twitter and YouTube is going to be mega bullish saying that this ETF is going to send us a lot higher, but I think it ends up playing out like the last three major institutional product launches that everybody thought was about to bring in all this money when in reality smart money has been accumulating all the way up and is looking to distribute into all the incoming liquidity from the ETF FOMO. And spot ETF narratives aside, we know that historically the first Fed rate cut has been bearish for Bitcoin because the reason the Fed is cutting rates is because of underlying credit issues and tight liquidity in the economy and they're trying to front run the recession like they did in the past four cycles. And because we're expecting a Fed rate cut around March of 2024 based on current data. And again, this could even get closer. Maybe it ends up being January if we really see the data deteriorate over the next two months, which would align absolutely perfectly with the ETF launch. But even if it were to remain in March, that's not giving us a lot of a window between the ETF and the first rate cut. And I do think this first rate cut will be bearish like the last one because the reason the Fed is cutting rates is because of recession concerns, credit tightness, and all these other factors that are not good for Bitcoin, which I consider a money debasement hedge. But of course, this is more short-term discussion. We know that in the long term, money printing will resume and it will be incredibly bullish for Bitcoin and the ETF will be incredibly bullish for Bitcoin as well because once we actually have that blow off top and get that sell the news event, we probably enter a reaccumulation period and all of that liquidity that's going to enter via the ETF will make a huge difference in the long term. And whenever the Fed does go back to QE, whether it's during the recession or post recession, and we see the unemployment rate going up, which forces the Fed to print money, I think Bitcoin with a spot ETF available 
will do incredibly well once those events occur. So in summary, the Bitcoin ETF is incredibly bullish short term and I'm not selling anything until we have the launch. It's probably bearish medium term once we actually have the sell the news event and the recession, but it's incredibly bullish long term because there's a new liquid avenue for investors who don't want to custody their own coins to buy Bitcoin and get exposure, which I think will be incredibly bullish over the long term. But the important thing is, if we continue going up here and everybody starts celebrating and FOMOing and making fun of you for not mortgaging your house to buy Bitcoin, keep in mind that the last three events like this, no matter how bullish things were, were sell the news events. And the last confirmation we're waiting for is a rally or a short squeeze into the launch to tell us that this is in fact a sell the news event. If we were to see a sell off going into the event, then it's hard to say that it'll be sell the news because we sold before the event occurred and all of that emotion and FOMO has already been washed out. So the confirmation we're waiting for is a rally going into the event because that's gonna be the fuel and emotion and misguided buying that will give us the flush afterwards. But anyway, let me know what you expect. Is the ETF bullish medium term? Do we rally into the event and just continue rallying afterwards? It's a little bit hard for me to believe that when we see what's going on with the economy and our expectations for rate cuts and a recession along with this unemployment rate that continues to tick up. But I would love to know what you guys expect. I know it's hard to hear these things. I was incredibly bullish in 2017 as well because I was listening to people on YouTube and Twitter. I was more prepared for that in 2021 because I saw how similar the narratives were. But I'm sure a lot of you that are newer and are being pitched so aggressively by people on Twitter and YouTube that this is the most bullish thing ever. And it just may be in the long term. I just think there is going to be some pain in the medium term once everybody FOMOs in. But anyway, thank you so much for support on the recent videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.